Are you thinking of retiring in Portugal? Is the vision of a relaxed beach lifestyle with warm sands and ocean views calling you? Or maybe it's a European sidewalk cafe in a bustling city with art, history, and culture that's more your speed. No matter what the case is, if you're looking for reasons to put Portugal at the top of your retirement list, or maybe you're looking for reasons to take it off, check out these 20 pros and cons to retiring in Portugal. I'm Seppi, rhymes with peppy from SheHitRefresh.com, and I help women age 30 and over break free from a life of routine to move abroad or travel the world long term, just like I did. In 2015, I moved from Texas to Spain and have been living here ever since, living my best life. I'm now 42, and I really don't see myself ever going back. I want to thank you so much for tuning into this channel. On this channel, I talk about moving abroad, and specifically for U.S. citizens. I'd love love to invite you to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any Move Abroad content. So Portugal, with one of the lowest cost of living in Western Europe, affordable healthcare, delicious Mediterranean cuisine and wines, endless coastlines, and warm people, Portugal is becoming more popular every year as foreigners discover this not so hidden gem. As you can probably tell, I'm not of retirement age yet, but I do love Portugal and have been going there since 2007. My last time in Portugal was in Lisbon last summer, actually. But when it comes to this list, the pros and cons were actually put together by a Portugal lover and expert. And she's actually a member of my community, She Hit Refresh. And her name is Cindy Sheehan. Cindy is an American who's a mostly solo backpacker and is looking to retire in Portugal this fall. She's just waiting for her visa to finally be approved. So Cindy graciously created this list for the She Hit Refresh blog. And I just thought since there's so much interest in Portugal here on the YouTube channel, I thought I'd make a video based on that information. If you'd like to check out Cindy's adventures, you can check her out on Post from a Flash Packer on Instagram and on her website, and I'll drop the link below. So in this video, I'm not gonna talk about how to retire in Portugal, but if you're interested in learning how to retire in Portugal, check out my digital book, I'm Out of Here, An American's Ultimate Visa Guide to Living in Europe. In this book, I go over the 17 easiest countries to move to in Europe, and Portugal's one of them, based on viable visa options. You'll find over 50 visa options in there, and it will even cover the visa option for Portugal to retire, which is the D7. You can find that there, or you can also check out my video on moving to Portugal. Okay, we're almost there, but before we dive into today's topic of the pros and cons, I just wanna give my weekly shout out. And this week's shout out goes to Mohammed Sharif. Mohammed commented on my video, moving abroad, how to choose the best country for you. And he says, thank you for this excellent video. The content in your videos are very helpful. Well, thank you so much, Mohammed, for tuning in. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos and to comment. And I'm just so happy to hear that they've been helpful. If any of the viewers out there, if you wanna get a shout out from me on my next video, please comment below or drop your question and maybe you'll be one of the lucky viewers that I'll give a shout out to. Okay, well, without further ado, let's dive in and talk about the 20 pros and cons of retiring in Portugal. Let's start with the good stuff. Number one is sunshine. So the biggest pro to retiring in Portugal are those 300 days of sunshine. Sunny days and mild winters makes it an appealing retirement destination. So Southern Portugal is typically warmer throughout the year, but if you go north, Porto and above, you'll find moderate climate with rainy, cool winters. Portugal isn't a big country, so if you're retiring there, you can always take a quick trip to the north to escape the heat or also go south to grab some of that warmth. Number two is diverse destinations. So no matter what you're looking for, Portugal probably has it. If you're a beach lover, you'll find gorgeous stretches of sand and dramatic coastlines. If you're more of a city person, Lisbon and Porto are two beautiful and buzzing cities. If you're looking for a colorful village with ancient ruins, head to Alentejo. Like to surf? You'll love Nazaré. Dreaming of retirement on an island? Well then Google the Azores and Madeira and you'll be speechless. Portugal may be small, but it has so much diversity to offer. 
Number three on the list are UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Portugal is home to over 17 UNESCO World Heritage Sites, and there are 14 more awaiting approval. You can visit the iconic Belém Tower, the historic Geronimo Monastery, Northern Portugal's 10th century Guimarães Castle, or the prehistoric art sites in the Coa Valley. Number four on the list is culture throughout the country. If you're a culture junkie, well then Portugal has no shortage of arts and entertainment. There are museums and art galleries everywhere, top name entertainment, professional sports, concerts, and everything happening in the big cities. You can also find local festivals that happen year round and historic palaces and monasteries. All of those are not to be missed. One thing that you'll definitely be mesmerized by are Portugal's famous azulejos, also known as the famous Portugal painted tiles that adorn buildings, train stations, and walls everywhere. While Spain may have flamenco music, Portugal has fado, and that's their hauntingly beautiful traditional music. Number five is delectable cuisine. So Portugal's food scene is generally underrated. I mean, the country boasts 28 Michelin-starred restaurants, but really the true culinary gems comes from those local family-run restaurants that you can find in any city, town, and village. Popular traditional dishes are bacalao, and that's codfish cooked a zillion different ways. Their famous but messy sandwich, the francesinha. They've got bifana, which is a mouth-watering, thinly sliced, marinated pork sandwich. I'm a vegetarian, by the way, so I have not tried these, but I am trusting Cindy that these are amazing. And of course, their most delectable, delicious, and decadent dessert that I've had plenty of, their pastel de nata, the mother of all custard tarts. Number six on the list is Portuguese wines. So pair that delicious food with a local wine. And with over 200 indigenous grapes, grown in 14 regions such as the Douro Valley and the Dow, you're gonna find refreshingly chilled vino verde, green wine as it's known, rich robust reds, heavenly white, and iconic port wine. Who is feeling like a glass right now? I sure am. You'll not only love the flavors, you're gonna love the affordable prices. They are a fraction of what a glass of wine will cost you in the US. Number seven is healthcare. So the World Health Organization has rated Portugal 12th in the world in overall healthcare efficiency, and it's also received high marks for patient-centered care and health outcomes. So Portugal does have universal health care, which means it's public health care available to all who reside in the country. But if you're coming as a retiree, you're going to have to purchase your own private plan because you won't have access to the public health care. But don't worry because private health care is super economical, especially compared to private health care in the US. To give you an idea, you can expect to pay anywhere from 1200 to 1500 US dollars a year per person. Yes, a year. Okay, let's keep it moving with the next pro for retiring in Portugal, and that is safety. So as the U.S. is starting to feel more unsafe, it's comforting to know that Portugal is a safe place to retire. Crime rates are some of the lowest in Europe, and most crimes are non-violent. And you're going to love this one. Gun ownership is heavily restricted and licensed. And did you know that self-defense is not considered a legal reason for owning a firearm in Portugal. Just to give you some stats on safety, the Global Peace Index has ranked Portugal fourth in the world for safety. You wanna guess where the US comes in? The US ranks at 122. And give you some other figures, Canada is number 10 and the UK is 33. So there's a big difference in safety compared to the US and Portugal. But do keep in mind that petty thefts such as pickpocketing is an issue in tourist areas, but that's the case in most major cities in Europe. Number nine on our list is proximity to other countries. So Portugal is located on the western coast of Europe and its neighbor is Spain. It's easy to pop over to Spain by car, plane, or train, or even with your own two feet if you're interested in walking the Camino de Santiago. If that sounds like of interest to you, I'm gonna drop a link below so you can get more information on walking the Camino, which is a pilgrimage in Northern Spain and Portugal. If you wanna go further than Spain, well, Europe is at your doorstep and it's really affordable and accessible to discover all of Europe and even beyond from Portugal. And number 10 is the D7 visa. So the best reason to retire in Portugal is by far this D7 visa. It's an uncomplicated, quick, and nearly painless residency visa that can pave a path to citizenship after five years of living in Portugal. The requirements for the D7 visa are fairly easy to meet and you can find more information in my digital book, 
I'm out of here in American's ultimate visa guide to living in Europe. Number 11 on the list is the non-habitual resident tax scheme or the NHR tax scheme. So a big draw for retirees to Portugal is this NHR tax regime because it offers foreign residents a generous tax break. Under this tax scheme, overseas income is not taxed in Portugal for the first 10 years of residency or citizenship. Yeah, 10 years. Now do note that there is a 10% tax on foreign pension income, and this does include social security. But in any case, just be sure to consult with a certified and experienced tax attorney to get more information on how you can benefit from the NHR. So number 12, the last pro that we have for Portugal before we move into the cons is the cost of living. So Portugal is the most affordable country in Western Europe. But saying that, I think it's important to highlight that while it's expensive for foreigners to live in Portugal, the cost of living is considered high for locals. So like anywhere, the cost of living is gonna vary from major cities to towns, and it's also gonna be dependent upon your needs, your lifestyle, and your spending habits. But to just give you an idea, a single person can live comfortably in Lisbon for less than 3,500 US dollars a month. And in other cities, you can probably live on 2,500 and for much less in villages and towns, very comfortably. Okay, so no country is perfect and there's no perfect place in the world. So we're gonna have to get to the cons of retiring in Portugal. And that takes us to number 13 and that's bureaucracy. So no matter where you choose to move abroad to, bureaucracy is gonna be a part of your journey. But there are some places in the world where bureaucracy can be more painful than others. So just prepare yourself for endless paperwork, frustration, slow responses to emails and phone calls, for everything from utility companies, internet providers, and even getting your driver's license at the IMT, which is the DMV equivalent in Portugal. And I think the best method to deal with this bureaucracy is to practice patience and just manage your expectations. Next on the cons list is number 14, and that's customer service. So Americans, we're used to a customer service culture that really caters to the customer and is available almost around the clock, right? Whether that's in person, on the phone, or via email. So in the US, you can usually get a hold of a company even at 8 p.m. on a Sunday night, or even just by logging on to their online system and figuring out something else yourself. But unfortunately, this is not the norm in Portugal. The culture of customer service is different abroad, so you're just gonna have to exercise patience once again here because you cannot change what is. But I think if you frame it as the lack of on-demand customer service, it's just part of that slower life that you're looking for in retirement, maybe that'll help make this change a little bit more comfortable. Number 15 on the list is learning a new language. So learning a new language can be both a pro and a con. So if you just speak English, I think you'll be comforted to know that English is much more widely spoken in Portugal than in its neighbor, Spain. But that doesn't mean that you can get by on English everywhere. So of course you're gonna find English speaking people in bigger cities like Lisbon and Porto, and of course in the touristic areas of the Algarve. But to truly integrate with the Portuguese and really get to know their culture, you're gonna need to learn the language. And so I think that's something that we should all attempt to do no matter where we're looking to live in the world. Be sure to start learning European Portuguese and not Brazilian Portuguese because they are different. But learning even just the simplest phrases will help you talk to your neighbors, help you make Portuguese friends, assimilate into the culture, and also effectively deal with that bureaucracy that I just mentioned. So the Portuguese government actually offers free language classes. And also if you're interested in getting Portuguese citizenship after you've been in Portugal for five years, then you're going to need to pass the A2 level, it's a pretty basic level, language exam. Next is number 16, and that is dog poop and dog barking. So picking up after your dog on the sidewalks in Portugal isn't as common as it is in the US, so you're definitely gonna need to be mindful of where you're stepping in some places. Dogs are also known to bark incessantly when they're home, and that can even happen when the owners are home as well. So if you're living in close quarters in a city like Lisbon or Porto, this can be a nuisance. All right, next on the list of cons is number 17, and that is lack of diverse cuisine. So bacalao, which is cod, and Portugal's signature dish that I mentioned earlier, and of course, their custard tart, they are amazing, 
but sometimes your taste buds just want something different. So if you're craving Thai, Indian, or other world foods when you're out and about, you're going to have to do some detective work to find a restaurant and to find a good restaurant. It's not that international foods don't exist in Portugal. It's just that they're not as prolific as they are in major towns and even smaller towns in the U.S. So as I mentioned, you'll have more luck finding these places in bigger cities, but you're probably not going to find anything other than Portuguese food if you're in a town or village. Number 18 is difficulty integrating. So as a foreigner who may not speak the language yet, you might find it difficult to make local friends and integrate into Portuguese social circles. So locals often socialize and work with other Portuguese people, especially outside of the main cities. And they often have friend circles that span decades and also spend a lot of time with their family. This isn't uncommon um, in other parts of the world. So they have already established social circles and that makes it a little bit more difficult to get in. That's not to say that you're not going to meet Portuguese people who want to socialize and get to know you, but it can be challenging to foster those deeper, meaningful relationships. So my best bit of advice is again, going back to the language, is learning the local language, but also volunteering is a great way to meet people and also attending meetups and different social gatherings. Now, of course, to make friends, you gotta show up at these gatherings, you gotta smile, and you gotta make the first move. Don't wait for someone to approach you. Definitely be proactive, but also use patience because it'll take the time to create your circle in your community and make friends abroad. And of course, if you get a little impatient making local friends, sometimes the fastest and easiest way to make friends is with fellow expats. So if you're looking for some information on the best expat communities in Portugal, check out my blog piece and I'll drop a link below that covers that. And we're almost to the end of the list. We're already at number 19 and 19 is smoking. So while it's mostly become passe to smoke in the US, people in Europe still smoke and very much so in public places. It's not uncommon to see and smell smokers at restaurants, bars, and outside cafes. So Portugal isn't the worst place in Europe, but it's definitely noticeable. And here we are, number 20 on our list of pros and cons of retiring in Portugal, and that is over tourism. Like most beautiful places in the world, parts of Portugal have been affected by over tourism, especially in Lisbon, Porto, and the Algarve. So what used to be a hidden gem is not so secret anymore, and you'll find plenty of tourists and expats in Portugal. This has definitely contributed to the cost of living for locals. Remember what I said earlier about Portugal being um, not expensive for Americans or for foreigners to live there, but for locals who live there, they have definitely seen the prices of everything go up around them. So keep this in mind when you choose your retirement location and when buying property abroad, because it's often people like us, the foreigners who are coming in, that are pricing locals out. Okay, we did it. Those are the 20 pros and cons of retiring in Portugal. I hope you found them useful. Of course, retiring in a foreign country is not rainbows and unicorns. So no matter where you choose, it's important to remember that there is no perfect place, but Portugal comes pretty close to that. So if you need more resources, again, check out my digital book, I'm Out of Here, an American's Ultimate Visa Guide to Living in Europe, and you'll find information on the 17 easiest countries to move to in Europe with over 50 viable visa options. Portugal is in the book, as well as the D7 visa that I mentioned. If you're a woman age 30 and over who's looking to move abroad or travel the world long term, please join my online community, She Hit Refresh. You'll meet over 10,000 like-minded women. You'll find tons of inspiration, information, support, and resources to help you with your move abroad. And of course, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any move abroad content.